striking matches and I'm gonna itch me where it scratches. That's right. We are live here tonight. Me, myself, Grimner, and Moose Girl, the Mighty Moose Girl, will be here soon on the line. It is December 7, 2018, our first show of December for this year. The Freakers Ball right here live on RealLibertyMedia.com on the Freakers Ball show page. Yes, indeed, this is the place to be if you want to be somewhere where we are. Uh, now, you can tune in the video directly live at vaughn.live slash Real Liberty Media, or you can just listen to the audio on RLM Radio at XYZ, or even on reallibertymedia.com, or on freedomsnetwork.com, or on realliberty.org, or many other places that we may be out there, and we are in many other places out there. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Have us all out there all over the place. And if you want to come on over here, jump on into the chat on RealLibertyMedia.com. That'd be a great thing, because this is where people come, and they talk and uh, random on, ra randomly about stuff that we talk about or stuff we're not talking about. And they make song requests, and they have jokes and have fun. Good old times can be had here. And you can join the, the likes of Barman and Cowboy Tech and myself and the Moose Girl, Miss Kate and uh, Asmo and Chloe and... Chalcedonian Circle in Dawn, Carol, Mr. Free and Slave Day Free, uh, Goober, the Zilla, and Miss Gramsie, who does her awesome show, the Grammy's Rocket Chair, every Wednesday and Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, a show not to be missed. And then we got the Vin E. Ponder Gander type guy, and the Poxified type guy, and Pone Sauce and Rain and the, the Fluke Bot. Is with us, Mr. Rob Works underscore not outstanding. Uh, Mr. Rome's is here, and Van E himself, not the Ponderganda version. And we got the Phantom, and we got Colfax and Cyborg Noodle in Dakota, and Dan from Tennessee. Mr. Frumpy, and uh, Grummet, and Java Doctor, and JJ's from Scotland, and Kozu, and Moe, and Sock Puppet, and Skittle. <laughs> and more and more and more. Now, I don't know where Moose Girl is. I haven't seen her chiming in. She may have had to step out for a little while. I, I didn't see that she didn't leave me any message. If she did, somebody here is real liberty, huh? Oh, they must have left whoever they were. But apparently, um, somebody thought they were going to be real liberty. Oh, baby. So, whoever it was, listen to me and Moose. So, well, welcome to real liberty and goodbye to real liberty because whoever they were, they left. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, speaking of, oh, that was that? Okay, cool. Uh, speaking of um, reallibertyorg uh, la yesterday, last night, um, he upgraded the server. Re-upgraded the server, I should say. Uh, it started off as a dedicated server, but there wasn't really enough stuff going on there, but then a whole bunch of people started coming in, and then the server started slowing down because he had switched it to a shared server, but last night he re-upped it to a dedicated server. Now, on this dedicated server, which uh, he also has a uh, Android app for realliberty.org available there now, uh, and you can see a thing about that on the top header, but on realliberty.org, Apparently, and and I, I don't 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 tie me to this yet, for certain, but apparently there's going to be live streaming, live video streaming available, and if there is, I, I have to give it a whirl, see if see if maybe we can shake off a of Vaughn. Although I've loved Vaughn, Vaughn's been very good to me since since uh, Mogulus <laughs> live stream quit quit being free. Um, uh, yeah, you know, same thing kind of thing happened with Ustream and others. But uh, if if he's gonna have that there and available on uh, on on the realliberty.org, what better place to do it from? So we'll, we'll have to check that out and see how it goes. But uh, uh, maybe over the next week or so, we'll do some experimentation. Moose Girl might be having a dog day. Well, she does have the new dog. Her new pooch. So, 
Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Did somebody say something? Did somebody say something? Moosey visits Alaska home. Oh, that's a whole so, something, something totally different. I'm scrolling up here. I'm looking here. I'm looking here. <laughs> I don't see any comments from her. So, going back to, uh, going back to all the way back. All right. So, she, she, has, she has not commented or mentioned anything. Oh, she will be here soon. All right. Well, you know what? Since she's going to be here soon, and I don't want to rush her, let's just go ahead and hit some jams here. And, um... Then she'll get here when she gets here. How's that be? That work out for y'all? <laughs> All righty. This is a little bit off, off, off center. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me try and recenter this here. I'm not sure what's going on there. I may have touched the browser at some point and made it not exactly in the same position it was last week. All right. Uh, there we go. So, let's play some jams. That's what I say. Kicking it off with a little Samantha Fish and... Oh, yeah, that's excellent stuff there. An homage to Ry Cooter performed in Paris, Texas <laughs> by Justin Johnson. Yeah, very nice stuff there. Uh, before that, we heard Papa Chubby doing Rock Me Baby at the Stanhope House. Oh, about a week ago, that was, 11.30, yeah, last Friday. That would have been. Uh, so, uh, excellent stuff there. Papa Chubby, and we kicked it off with the wonderful, the awesome, the terrific Samantha Fish doing Shake Em On Down up close at Chan's. Yep, 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 yep. All oh, great stuff there. Great music for y'all. All, for all y'all that... Oh, sometimes you're in Albany. Oh. Okay. <laughs> hey, Moose Girl. Well, I haven't heard the click yet. There it is. Hey, Moose Girl. <laughs> hey. Uh, I always forget to wait. Oh for, my God. To wait, to wait for the little. <laughs> oh my God. What? 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 <sighs> my fucking computer. Oh, that's it. Now I'm on Vaughn Live and not Real Liberty Media. What the fuck? I don't know. Do you do you must have clicked over oh there? Oh my fucking god! Yeah, you clicked on over there, I guess. My fucking computer. <laughs> I fucking hate it. Well, you, you have the answer. I know. An I know. You have I the know. answer. I spent eight hundred dollars to get a fucking rocking computer. Fuck me. <laughs> now I'm on Real Liberty Media org. Real Liberty dot org. All right. Uh, come on. Come on. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know. It's frustrating, huh? Yes. Well. I don't have the dog anymore, CT. Oh, you took her back? Yes. Yeah. All right, well. I geez. I feel bad about it, but... The, I didn't know I had to pay $500 for the dog. So, yeah. That's why. Well, I mean, just the two fifty of the original fee was enough. Right. Well, the normally it's a one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. But they attached a hundred dollars to her for like some leg legacy donation, right? I see. Because she's a smaller dog, and they know those get adopted out like fast. Right? Yeah. She's a really cute, nice, smaller dog. So we'll get out adopted faster than other dogs. So the Humane Society, well, we're going to make an extra $100 on this dog, dog. You know? Right. So then, so, okay, well, 250 So I knew, I thought, okay, that's fine. You know, $100 donation to the Humane Society, whatever. So then I get there yesterday and pick her up, uh -huh. and it's $522.09. And they're and it says on the thing from what the vet's office, a doctor to pay. Well, they never told me that. Okay, so the total was five twenty-two. Yes. All right. So you still had two fifty. Like, so you. What? It was, it was another. It was, a, it was another uh, two seventy-seven or whatever for the spay. Yeah. That's still it's a lot like, for. A, that's still a lot for a spay. For a rescue dog. Yeah. To pay 
five hundred dollars. Right. No. Yeah. No. It's that's that's a crazy amount. Yeah. And she. I mean, I had to take her back today because I was starting to bond with her, and she was starting to like come out of her shell, and it's like I gotta get rid of. I gotta bring her back today, or I'm not gonna be able to bring her back. You know. Yeah. Right. Right, Rome. That's what I thought. You know, and I was talking to Kate too, and she's like, "That's just wrong. I mean, that's not right for a rescue dog." Yeah, I can go. I can buy a pure a Jack Russell Terrier puppy for almost that much, you know. Right. And a dog that doesn't, you know, when you have a puppy. See, we didn't get Marty when he was a puppy, so he had all these issues, you know. Mm -hmm. And this dog, that this this latest dog, she came from a hoarding to, an animal hoarding situation. She was brought in with nine other animals. She was, was living with nine other dogs and five cats and four rabbits. Right. So it's just like you know, I'm. Uh, those shelters are getting expensive too. When we got Marty, he was like two hundred. And, and was it was this a humane society thing or what? Yeah. Well, they won't let you adopt an animal unless you agree to have them spayed or neutered and neutered. Yeah. So when we got Marty twelve, thirteen years ago or whatever. It, and plus, he was a male, so a neuter surgery is a lot cheaper than a spaying surgery, right? Okay. Because, obviously, with a female, you have to go inside. You know, it's a more invasive procedure, so it costs more money. But, and then they're like, the lady, the one lady at the, well, we don't have the resources to pay for the spay. It's like, fuck you. You know, I didn't say that, but... It's like some lady just got busted. They hired this lady to be their, like, accountant. Right. And so this summer or whatever, she tried to cash a check for 60 grand. Okay. In the main society. So it's not like they don't have any money. Yeah, they have employees they have to pay, and they have to buy the dog food, and they have to maintain the, the shelter and pay the utility bills and everything. Yeah. But, you know, I was just... They did. They should have told me that before I adopted this dog. They should have said, "You do realize that it's not gonna." They should have gave me the total. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. No. Before I it, walked in the door to bring her home. It you know? to, yeah, because it's supposed to be two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. I was expecting two fifty dollars, two hundred fifty dollars plus some tax. You know. Tax on a dog. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's not even taxable. It should have just been two fifty flat, but. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, they they used to have it. I, I don't know, I don't know if it's still out there or not, but they used to have down there in San Diego where I was. They, there'd be like uh, these vans or trucks or whatever you call them, and they'd yeah. go they'd go around and they'd park in a certain neighborhood every weekend, and you bring your your animals in, dogs or cats, and they would spay or neuter for free. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of places that do that. Where like if I. Like, if I would have done it on my own, like, let's say I adopted the dog, and I would have said, okay, I'll get her spayed for a certain amount of time. Right. Like, I could have found some place like that that caters to, like, lower-income people or whatever, because they do have that here in Eau Claire, like, twice a year, they have a spay and neuter clinic. Yeah. Or whatever. Or even a vaccination, you know, where you can get cheap vaccinations for your dog. You know, right, cat. right. And it's like, you know what? I, I just felt just... A bad, it just wasn't a good experience. And we got Murray from the same Humane Society, but they, they, they've changed the way they do things now. Like, you used to be able to go to the Humane Society when they were open and go back where the dogs are. Right. Now you have to fill out an application before you can meet any of their dogs. Yeah, see, that's great. I, I remember just walking in. Right. You we walk, used to be able to walk, walk in I there. I saw Marty pick. online. I said, we're going there when they're open. We went there. He was there. We looked at him. We're like, we're adopting this dog, and we we, we got him. Yeah, that, that's all there was to it, you know. Right, and, and it wasn't, and, I mean, they did a little a, bit of a background check on us, just made sure I owned a home and everything. Uh, but it seriously did not take, like, I, I filled out the application on this dog, like, two weeks ago. It took yeah. two weeks for them to make a decision on who was going to adopt this dog. Yeah, no, like, my one dog I got I, I got from the I got from the humane society one dog that was walked in and I, and I picked her out. Here signed up signed some paper, gave him twenty bucks, and I was gone. 
Right. <laughs> Twenty bucks. Well, then I looked at the, yeah, I looked at the Clark <laughs> County website today, and they have two Jack Russell here, or they're Jack Russells, but they're black and white. They're not brown and white like Marty. Yeah. But still, okay. What is their adoption fee? Three twenty-five. Wow. That's how much they get for puppies there. I mean, it's because they're smaller. These these shelters are jacking up their prices, man, big time. Yeah, but it's still cheaper than going to a breeder. So that's how they get away with it. Yeah, yeah, sign of the times, though, you know. Anyway, sorry right. to see her go. That's a shame. Yeah. And, like, senior dogs, like, some of the dogs that are harder to adopt, yeah. they'll waive the fee. But, no, they get these two Jack Russells, so they're like, oh, we're getting 325 with piece of meat. Yeah. It's like, whatever. You guys, I know they need to make money because it's expensive to run a humane society because they're non-profit. But it's just... I was just not happy about that 500 bucks. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't planning on it, so. Oh, wow. That's the way it goes, I guess. It is. It is. You know. And one other thing that happened today was my old, my mom's oldest sister died today. Oh. My aunt. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's okay. It was, she was, she had surgery like three weeks ago and never re recovered from it. Yeah. But the reason I bring this up is not to get, you know, I know. It, it, it was I wasn't very close to her, whatever. You know, she was my aunt. But um, the one thing I wanted, I wanted to talk about, and I made a mental note to talk about this tonight, was make out a will, okay? Yeah. Make out a will now when you're in, you have your wits about you, because my aunt, she called my mom the day of her surgery and said, I need a will. <laughs> well, guess what? It was too late at that point because she needed emergency surgery. Right. So, guess what? Her house, her car, everything in her house, everything she owns is going to the state of Minnesota. Well, you should be able to go through probate and, and get, I mean, you're, she's, you're. you're no you're, will, Grim. No. I don't know, but, is, but living relatives should be able to, uh, no, that, that that's. No. She didn't have a will. I, I know, but so still. everything goes to the state. Well, uh, in the state, in Minnesota. Yeah, well, maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know it, no, it's, it's true. I was even talking to my dad tonight. I'm like, she doesn't have a will. He's like, well, that, I said, it's going to go to the state, everything she owns. He's like, you mean the estate? I'm like, no, the state of Minnesota. <laughs> so even if it's a simple will. Doesn't you just do it yourself? Just you don't even have. Just make sure you have a will, because you don't want the state to get your shit. Right. Well, I mean, I, my I, aunt wasn't rich. She doesn't have. She had a small two bedroom house on a slab. I mean, her cars were like two grand. She was not a rich lady at well, all. Regardless. So, what? I said regardless. Exactly. Mm. It, it, you need to have a will uh, because of this happening. I am going to make out a will. Uh, and, and, I want and, my kids to get whatever I have that's worth value. You know, after my expenses or funeral or whatever the fuck, I want them to. I want them to get it, not the state. I, I find it's best that you make out a will while you're alive. Yes. <laughs> or, well, you have to. When you're dead, it's too late. If you don't have one, it's too late. I'm joking. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. Just uh, everyone. Just. Make a mental note, just a bit of advice. Yeah. If I were you, that's a good question. You have Kate, children. Yeah, what? Kate, Kate asked, doesn't she have children? No, nope, no children. No kids. So there, there you go. But she's, still, she's but still, woman. the sister—that's a living relative. That's that's where it should go. She, my mom had power of attorney. Once she died, that goes away. She had a power of attorney to make medical decisions for her. That's it. No, she has no children. She she was married for a while back in California, but they didn't have kids together, and she has no children. Single woman, seventy four years, seventy six years old. Yep, no will. So the state's gonna get everything she has that's worth value. Yes, come well, Everything she has, not even it's worth value. They're getting everything. Right. And like I said, she doesn't have a lot. Her yeah. house is in. 
worth, it's not like a million dollars we're talking about. You know what I mean? Right, but right. But it's the point of it to me. You know, it's just the whole point. Like, how fucked up is that? Uh, very? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> but my aunt, at the same point, my aunt was stupid. She should have named a beneficiary. She should have had a will made out. She shouldn't have waited until the day of her emergency surgery. You know? Yeah. I mean, no, no offense to her, but she was kind of eclectic and, you know, stuff like that. So. Yeah. A little eccentric. Yeah, very. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's a shame. Anyway, yeah, that happened, but, you know, her quality of life, she had 90% blockage in her heart when she went in. Yeah. They opened her up, and they realized her, the le bottom left of her heart, there's four chambers. The bottom left chamber was, was damaged. Mm. She had had a heart attack before she went in for that. So, another thing is, people, if you are feeling weird and wrong and feeling like something's not right, <laughs> go well, to the fucking well, doctor. Well, well, go good. to the fucking doctor. Because they figured she had a heart attack, a mild one, but that's how her, her heart got damaged. So, when they went in there, it was supposed to be a four-hour surgery. It turned out to be an emergency surgery. It took nine hours. Yeah. And they they couldn't keep her blood pressure up. Her, all her organs took a hit, and that's hard on your body. You keep, it's very hard to recover from something like that, oh, especially no doubt. when you're seventy six years old. But but as far as uh, feeling weird and wrong, I mean that's like normal for me. No, if you feel <laughs> like she went into the ER a couple of times for stomach pain, she presented it as stomach pain. Right. They didn't do a heart workup. Which, if they would have done a heart workup on her, they would have realized, oh, this woman has a heart problem, you know? Sure. But she, they didn't do it because she, she went in saying her stomach hurt. So they didn't think, they didn't do the heart, you know? Because they're incompetent assholes. Right. You think they, if, especially if it wasn't the first time she went in. It was like the second, she went in like twice. Yeah. You know? That's just not right. Yeah, and you got to be your own advocate. I mean, I feel bad because she was a she's a single lady, seventy six years old. You know, she had ninety percent blockage when she went in. For that yeah, surgery. excuse me, whatever. She was probably ready to go. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But the point is, is make out a will, people. Because you just That's right. And if you need and to you know yeah. because you don't know anything can happen. I mean knock on wood, but you don't know. And and let me just say if you, as you're making out your will, if you need my information <laughs> <laughs> as your you prim anything to grab. as your primary beneficiary, I'll just right. just let me know. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll give you all the information you need. <laughs> uh <laughs> oh my God, that's funny, Grim. Yeah, but no, seriously, people. I know it's not something fun to think about. You don't want to think about your death, but think about the people you're leaving behind. You know, and just, yeah, uh, you know, yeah regardless, you think, you think about the state. Yeah, and all your yeah, yeah. That's the thing is, 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 you know, that's that's the thing is. Uh, right. There's, there's got to be somebody in your life that's more worthy of. Having whatever crap you may have, you know, acquired over your over your years, right. than the freaking government. Yeah, you don't want them to have have it. I mean, you, you, no, uh, this lady that does not have kids. My other aunt, my mom's other sister, has one child. But even so, she should have a will too. Sure. You know, even if you have children, you should still have a will. It doesn't just automatically go to them. Exactly. You have to specify what you want done with yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they have to not, they have to adhere to that. Right. It's just, I feel bad because she has some stuff, you know, that's worth something, but now nothing, she has nothing. Well, she's dead, so it doesn't matter, but, yeah. you know. Right. Anyway, so. that, that happened, and I'm fine. She's fine. I, I, it's a blessing because she was she never recovered from that surgery, so yeah, yeah, it's fucked up. But 
No more. Yeah. There you go. There you go, Moose. There you go, Moose. Martin, right, right. right. Save that. Right. Okay, save, there we go. Yep. Save that's, that link. Thank you, Rome's, for looking that up because um, that is really, you can do it yourself. Yeah, I, I have actually. Your own. You don't need a lawyer. People are like, oh, well, you got to go to a lawyer to make out a will. Well, maybe if you're a billionaire. Well, no. <laughs> I have, but if I have you're a... not a billionaire, you know, make out your own. It doesn't have to be in-depth or anything. You know, just make it as simple and easy. As, like, everything you, like, for me, it's going to be easy. Everything I have, divide it in half. Well, it's Matt and Zach. I got two kids. Make it way easy. Right. You know? I have a program that I've had for years. It's, uh, I don't know, it makes all kinds of various legal documents. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's what, that's all you need. Yeah. Yep. And you can even get it notarized if you want to go that route. You don't have to, but... No, you don't. You know, it, it, it will stick. Whatever will you make up, even if it's just like, whatever I got goes to blah, blah, blah. Right. The, as long as long as they know your intentions, right for your crap, then yeah. that that's where it goes. Exactly. I mean, it it it's not that hard. And if you have children, especially, please do this because it will it will save them a lot of. Now, now let me say this though, you know, as as a sidebar, if you are in debt. Don't make out a will. <laughs> right, because they will incur your debt. Yeah. So if you have, yeah. if you owe a bunch of money. Yeah. Good idea, Graham. <laughs> screw the will. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you're like in debt by like about a hundred grand or something. Whatever. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Or whatever amount. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just let the state take care of that. If somebody, the state wants your, some of your stuff, there you go. You have my debt. <laughs> right. Other than that, leave me the hell alone. <laughs> yeah, oh, so... Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, I just wanted to bring that up, because it's just, I, when my mom said that, all her stuff's going to the state, I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, because she didn't have a will. I'm like, are you kidding me? I was like, that sucks. Uh, you, you know, know? You, you could probably that take sucks. it. You could probably take it to court or whatever and, and get You could probably, but then you'd have to pay a lawyer. And, oh, my God. You know, it's just, it's a racket, crap. Oh, I'm sure it is. You know, you gotta, it, how much is the lawyer going to cost? How much is the shit worth, you know, versus the, how much you're going to pay the lawyer and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Right. It's just, it, it, the best thing you can do is have a will. That's, that, that was the point of me bringing this up, and, um... I just, I'm going to do this soon. There you go. You got that link. Just go ahead and do it tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to, because I was marked that. Because, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, take very long. I, and I'll, I'll put the link into the post-show blog, too, so. Okay, cool. But um, the other thing I saw today, which isn't surprising at all, it's off It's off topic. We're changing lanes here. <laughs> um, Marlboro owner Altria invests in $1.8 billion Invest 1.8 billion in marijuana company. Right, I saw that. So here we go. This is what we all said all along: that these big corporations are not going to just sit back and watch all these other people making money off of weed, right? They're going to be like, "Oh no, we want a part of that fucking action." Right. I, I mean, especially after all the losses they've taken over all the years from all the lawsuits. Exactly, and so. and. The, the hit that I mean, basically smoking is tab smoking cigarettes is like taboo now. Yeah. People look look their, look down their noses at you if you smoke a, if you're a cigarette smoker, right? Yeah, fuck them. Like, oh, how can you keep doing that? Uh, blah, 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 fuck you, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, secondhand smoke and blah blah blah. blah, blah, blah. And... You know, like when I had babies when I was pregnant. Well, you should really try to quit smoking, you know. Which I did cut now when I was pregnant, right? I, I cut way back. Yeah. But once I had them, I went back, you know, and they're like, well, you can't smoke around your babies. They're going to blah, 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 secondhand smoke killed. My yeah. kids are just fine. Yeah, it's all nonsense. Yeah, my kids it's are just busy, fucking busy fine. bodies. Busy bodies trying to run other they people's don't lives. Smoke cigarettes. My kids do not smoke cigarettes. There you go. I don't think they ever will. Yeah. 
But when I was not. growing up, my dad smoked cigarettes. My mom did for a little bit. Everyone smoked cigarettes. You could smoke a cigarette anywhere you went. You could be in a baseball game and smoke a fucking cigarette. Sure, anywhere. You could be in an airplane and smoke a fucking cigarette. Right. Elevators. Okay. They, they, they had ashtrays in elevators. <laughs> they did. You could smoke anywhere, any place. Yeah, I mean, if you want to talk about you want to talk about your enclosed space, you're in an elevator. Right. <laughs> Airplane. That's right. an enclosed flight space. Right. Public bathrooms, still, wherever it didn't matter. In yeah. Restaurants. You used to be able to smoke at your desk. Yeah. If you had a desk job. Well, when I so, when I moved to, when I moved to New Mexico, you could smoke most places. And then the yeah. busybodies got in the way and said, "Nope, we're gonna make no no public or businesses." Right. Okay, the biggest thing that I got pissed about was when they banned smoking in the bars in Eau Claire. I'm right. like, "What's that? This is Wisconsin. These people are are, are private people. If, if a private bar owner wants to be non smoke or smoke free, fine. But any other, I mean, the bartender, the bar owners were fucking pissed, dude." Sure. Because they thought for sure we're gonna lose money. Yeah, I'm, lose sure money. They, I'm sure they. I'm sure they did. Can't inside the bar anymore. Yeah. I mean, it used to be when you went to the bar, it was so smoky. Like if it was a small bar, it was packed, and you could smoke in there. Right. Smoke everywhere. Yeah. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not I'm, saying. I'm, yeah, well, yeah, you're, that's. I mean, you're going there. You're going to there. Your own free will, and and you right. know what you know what to expect when you walk in. Exactly. I yeah. mean, I think it should be left up to the bar owner. Oh, no doubt about the it. Bar to be smoke free or not. No, no doubt about it. Because you know, before they passed this, there were a couple bars that were like smoke free. You know, we're yeah. smoke free here. You know. So then, what happened was that passed where it was you couldn't smoke in the bars here anymore. Uh huh. And so they had to improvise the bar owners and make, like, out, so outdoor patio places so they could go outdoors and smoke while they were having their beer. Because technically, you're not supposed to walk out of a bar with the drink that they served you. So you can't really go out the front door with your beer. You can go out there and smoke a cigarette, but you got to leave your beer at the bar. Right? right, right. But so what they did was they're like, okay, well, we're going to just make patios off the, off the back door and make it so they can't get out that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. They have it enclosed. So that's how they got around that. But still, it fucking sucks, dude. All right. This is Wisconsin. I'm sorry. I don't want to go outside and smoke a cigarette when it's 30 below. Exactly. I just <laughs> don't. That's not enjoyable to me at all, you know? Yeah. No, I'm sure. I mean, I'm old school. I'm over 50 now. So I remember the day, back in the day, you could, my dad smoked. He smoked everywhere. Oh, Drunk wait. Hey, I mean, wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait a second. Today's the 7th, so the next yeah. the next Freakers is not until the 14th. Right. Which is a day too late. Right. <laughs> so everybody say, happy birthday, Moose Girl, because her birthday's the 13th. My birthday is next Thursday. Yeah. yeah. So happy birthday, Moose I just talked to someone tonight whose birthday is next Tuesday. Yeah, uh, yeah. She's a little bit older than me, but that's she, cool. I always like meeting December babies. And Moose Girl's got to be 29. Yep, 29 again. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, and speaking of that, I tried to do this job that I took, and I can't do it physically. Yeah. Can't do it. It's just, no. Thank you, Cowboy Tech. You're so sweet. Thank you very much. And so, I can't do the job of begging people's groceries for eight hours. Not at a place that's as big as a Costco. Okay? Right. I mean, I'm no spring chicken, which you say I still am, but whatever. Yeah, no, I, I heard you clucking. I, it's, yeah. oh, oh my God, it's, it, I have no <laughs> appreciation for anyone that makes groceries and all, <laughs> a newfound appreciation. Uh, you know, anybody, anybody that has to deal with the public at that level every day, forget it. Yeah, I mean, I uh, used to I, hate going, door, I, I still don't love grocery shopping for myself, mm -hmm. 
but I don't mind bagging groceries for myself, right? But when you're doing it for other people, you're like, fucking bake your own groceries. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding, no. But um, the customers were all really nice. Some were very eccentric and very weird, but you get that when you deal with pu- the public like that. Like, yeah. some guy come come in, I don't know if he was all loopy or what, but... Or he might have been drunk, or just, I think he had dementia. Mm-hmm. Or Alzheimer's, or some fucking shit. I don't know. He might have been mentally ill or something, but... Some lady ahead of him had a John Wayne, like a people that did a special on John Wayne or whatever. Mm-hmm. So she bought the magazine. And John Wayne's on the cover, and he's behind her, right? I thought they were together, but they weren't. I thought they were married people, but they weren't. But anyway, he's like, John Wayne, John Wayne couldn't hit the side of a fucking bar. He, 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 <laughs> he was just an actor. He's like, and then a little while later, he's like, Steve McQueen, Steve McQueen was a good actor. And then a little while later, he's like, yeah, John Wayne, he was a Hollywood cowboy. <laughs> you know, was a real cowboy? Stevie Crockett. Stevie Crockett was a real cowboy. <laughs> was that guy he was fighting down there at the Alamo? <laughs> I was just like, dude, what the fuck are you Simmer talking down, about? Simmer down, simmer down. You reminded me of a scene from the movie Repo Man. Oh, God, he was, he was funny. What? Yeah, said you reminded me of a scene from the movie Repo Man where they started talking okay. about John, John Wayne. John yeah, Wayne? Okay. John Wayne was a fag. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that great. guy was like in his 70s so he had to have something going on upstairs <laughs> his, his brain that wasn't the snapses weren't connecting all the way anymore <laughs> yeah. he was a wild he was I mean I wanted to laugh but I didn't so I could tell the lady for him was just fucking pissed you know <laughs> she, she wanted to say shut the fuck up you know yeah, that that one was the right guy, I guess. And then but, we uh, left. He was not. He was he not a left, good actor. I said to the cashier, you know, they were both gone. I said, I don't know if that guy was drunk or just had dementia. <laughs> the cashier Maybe like, both. He was very rude. That lady in front of him was pissed. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it, you know, Graham. I know you hate people, but. Moments like that kind of almost make it worth it, you know, <laughs> to work a job like that. Sure, sure. <laughs> it was like the highlight of my day, the crazy guy talking about fucking Hollywood and Davy Crockett. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. And then when he said, who was that guy who was fighting me all? I was like, Pancho Villa? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to keep him going, you know what I mean? <laughs> I want to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's who he, he was trying to find out. Remember the name of, but oh my god, people are so funny. They are. Anyway, yeah, let's, let's hear some. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, let's 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 switch into some music here. Let's finish, do that. Yeah, and then we'll be back. Finish, finish your uh, state, your thought there. No, I was just gonna say, old people, older people, they 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 can be really funny, you know. Yeah. Some of the nicest ones that I waited on were in their 70s or older. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, it was really, it, that part of it was all right. Cool. Yeah. All right. We'll be back. All right. This is something about this, this rock that we're so familiar with. Third Rock from the Sun. All right. That was a, a video by Monroe's Retro, Donovan, Season of the Witch. Originally requested by Cowboy Tech and re-requested by me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think we can all appreciate that. I don't know why there's so much video after the end of the audio, but that's cool. Uh, a- anyway, uh, the, before that, we had Trampled by Turtles, Midnight on the Interstate. Originally requested by Moose Girl and re-requested by Moose Girl. <laughs> anyway, we kicked it off. Stevie Ray Vaughan, Third Stone from the Sun. From live at the El Macambo. <laughs> good stuff. Good tunage. Oh, yeah. So, anyway. Um, yeah, cool. Nice. Thank you for playing that uh, Midnight on the Interstate, because they actually say happy birthday in that song. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. They do. It's about someone's birthday, so. Yeah, you know, um, my, my question on that there, though, that, yeah. vi- that video, 
This is, yeah. It's a really cool video. It is. But it's got nothing to do with the song. Not really. It's well, it's about family and Dave. Yeah, yeah, but he it's called went through a divorce and stuff, and I think it has to do with the problems that he had in his relationship. But but it's called Midnight on the Interstate. On the interstate because he's coming back from being out of town, coming back on the interstate, back to the cities or something. Oh, I see. I see. And I get the feeling the song is about you know he's out on the road working and she's at home with the house and the kids and working her full-time job, and he's out doing the gigs. Oh. You know, it's a life of a musician. That's Not a lot of people can live with someone like that, a musician. It would be hard. Sure. Especially if they're touring all the time, and that's how they make their living. It would be a really really hard to be the stall of one of those musicians, I would think. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because you, you have to be willing to let them do their thing, you know? Right. That's right. what they do for a living. That's what they do, and that means they have to tour. And you know, it, it's it, it could be. I could see how it could fuck up relationships. Old oh, relationships. Yeah, but um, we were talking about. Oh yeah, so it's gonna be winter here on December twenty first. Well, in Wisconsin, winter always starts before that date. <laughs> that's a, okay, uh, that's a good one, CT. <laughs> Oh, let me look, look at that. Yeah. Wisconsin and Minnesota are actually the whole, like, upper... Oh, yeah. That's funny. Oh, uh, that's funny. And and uh, let, let me just share it with the folks in case somebody's not here okay. to, to, to see it. It's a, it's a little meme there. Cowboy Tech posted. And it's got a picture of the little uh, paper clip thing that, that used to yeah. be there used to be in Word. and The wizard. Yeah. And it says, hi, it looks like you're too young to remember Clippy. Would you like some help with getting off my goddamn lawn? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yes, awesome. that's great for old techs. Why, why but that... what I was going to say is that up here in these brutal Arctic northern regions that we live in, that some of us in the country live in, yeah, and it, oh, throughout the world. I mean, Siberia, fucking, you know, Norway, Sweden, Germany, uh -huh. Austria, Switzerland. We do in winter. Alaska, but well, that's the U.S. Um, Siberia would suck, dude. Yeah. Siberia would totally suck. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I've never been there, but I'm assuming it would suck. Because they get, like, the most brutal, at least, cold winter weather oh, hey, ever. Uh, speaking of Siberia. Like, we fly into Antarctica. But, but, but speaking of Siberia... Mm -hmm. I'm watching this series on Amazon right now. Oh yeah. And and it's Russian. It's Russian. Okay. So what's, what's the name of it? It's called The Day After. Okay. Cool. And, um, it, it I think good? I I think if you don't mind reading subtitles. Right. I which think, I've been watching a couple Russian or documentaries that are in Russian or in subtitles because they speak Russian in it, which I think yeah. is more realistic. Oh you know? sure, sure, sure. So I, yeah. I, I think you'd really like the series. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's very, very interesting stuff. Um, that uh, I bet that, that that's in that show. I'm like fascinated with like the Russian culture. Like I don't mind subtitles because I like to hear the Russian language being spoken. Yeah. It's a lot. It sounds like German a lot of the time. It's not exact, not exactly, but it sounds a lot like German. Anyway, as, as I started as I started watching this show, mm -hmm. um, and it starts off with these people, these nine young, I don't know, late teen, early twenty people that are right, right. They wake up locked in a a bunker. Yeah, uh, I saw the the ad for it. I okay. actually clicked on it. The description of the movie. Yep. But, but my my first thought was, if if this is a, a fair represent, representation. Of, of Russian people, yeah, they got they got a lot of hot women. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a hot a woman. Women are hot all over the world. Right? Well, no, I mean, but I mean, but I mean, every single one of them was just like gorgeous. <laughs> well, yeah, but they're probably actresses. <laughs> well, I, I know, but like I, I said, mean, if if it's a fair <laughs> representation, <laughs> if, 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 if if it's a fair <laughs> representation of Russian women, I mean, the guys the guys are just normal dorky guys. 
I, I, I guess. I mean, to me, they, yeah. they, look, they look that way. A anyway, um, <laughs> but but you find out later there's a reason why they're all hot women. Um, oh, okay, so it, it ties into the, the movie or the yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a very, very, very interesting story, though. Sounds good. Sounds interesting. I'll check it out. Yeah. It's on Amazon, you said, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Yeah, that's where I've been watching these. Uh, I watched. Oh, it was a series about Catherine the Great, and there was two two seasons of it. And it was really good. It was in the they were speaking Russian, but there was some subtitles. But it was really good, yeah. and it was actually historically like factual, you know. Well, I, I don't. I'm, I'm no. sure this is not historically factual. No, that's your show. But but the one I, but, but it is totally plausible. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That sounds good. I like those ones that are like real life. You know well, what I mean? I, I don't know if it's like real They're life, but like, it, 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 it's it's plausible to a degree. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you're kind of a sci-fi guy, though. So yeah. You know, but um, getting back to Living in Winter cold sucking. Yeah. Um. So I'm really bad about this, but I am going. I I'm going to. I'm just going to make an effort and just like force myself to do it. You know. Um. I always have blankets in my car because I go to a lot of hockey games and baseball yeah. games and shit. Right. So I always have at least one blanket in my car. So I'm good there. And so the one blanket I have, it's it's like an antique blanket, but it's made out of wool. So I decided that one needs to be in my car because wool is one of the warmest fucking things in the world. Right. A wool sweater is very warm. Wool pants would be very warm, okay? They used to make long underwear out of wool, which sucks because actually it, it kept them warm, but it's very heavy. Itchy. You know, itchy. It, it, itchy. Wool is itchy, yes. And so... <laughs> They tried to get away from the itchiness, but they couldn't. So, like, a lot of the military uniforms in World War II, World War I, and other wars, Civil War, were made out of wool. Right. And even the, you know, the undergarments were made most, I think, out of cotton. Sure. But that wool, like you said, Graham, it's itchy and it's hot. Right. It's good for winter, but not for summer. No. No, I mean, if you're wearing a wool, something wool in the summer, you're going to be fucking roasting, right? Most likely. But anyway, I, I, I went off on a tangent a little bit. So, the cold weather clothing has gotten a lot better. See, what I use for, like, my long underwear, they're not the old school long underwear that were made out of wool or cotton that are very thick. Right. Because I remember when I was a kid, I, I hated wearing long underwear under my pants. Because they just, they're bulky. You know, I had to have, like, summer-sized pants and winter-sized pants. Because in the winter, I had to wear long underwear, so I had to make sure my pants were a little bit bigger. But nowadays, they have thin, long underwear. Like, there's a brand out there called Cuddle Duds. There's, you know, and silk is actually the best um, protection against cold. Silk. Okay. And also, another trick, ladies, um, nylons. I always keep, I have a couple pair of nylons that I keep because you can cut off the the underwear part, you know, or you can just wear, not even cut them apart, just wear long underwear, at, wear nylons as long underwear. I've done that before, which it works all right, but not as good as like silk does, you know, because what I'm saying is throughout time now, long underwear has gotten very thin. But it's effective, and so it's not, you don't feel all bulky and everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, I got on this subject because in Wisconsin, anywhere you live in a place that has really cold weather, right. um, we could actually die, okay? If, we, if, if, we're, if I'm driving between here and fucking Duluth, and I, my car breaks down halfway in between and it's 40 below out, that's a serious emergency there, you know? That right. is not a good thing to happen. No, because you, you don't can want seriously that. You, frostbite can set in within, within like four to five minutes, okay? Sure. Hypothermia can set in in like thirty minutes, twenty to thirty minutes. And so 
if your car is fucking disabled and you have no heat source, you're fucked. And if you have a cell phone but you're in the bumfuck Egypt, there's no fucking cell service, right? Well, even if there is, it's going to take somebody a good time a to good get there. 20 minutes, 40 minutes to get to you. Right. Right? At least, right? So you better be, better have some kind of winter survival kit in your vehicle. And, not even, and this applies to everybody in any part of the country, really, because look at those people out in California that had to fucking flee in minutes' notice from those fires. They were probably living in their car. You need, you know, they should have had water in their car. You know what I mean? You know, just as a, even, you know, along those lines, this is kind of along the lines of having a goal bait. You know, if, if you have to go, you have a bag set up with some supplies that'll keep you going for a little bit. You know what I mean? Don't go in your go bag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, a candle, so what what they suggest for winter survival kit, this is, this isn't the full list, but a winter survival kit consists of things like bottled water, candles, candy bars, blankets, um, even flares, you know, um, you, you just basic things that you would need to survive in an in a extreme temperature environment for a little, a while, you know, maybe an hour, three hours, maybe 24 hours, right? Right, right. So you should be prepared for that, and... I am bad at it, I, I admit. You know, I have some tools in my car and stuff. I have blankets in my car. I don't have the water. I don't have the candles. I don't have the candy bars. You know, I don't have the flares. So I'm, I'm just going to make sure I do that and make sure my kids do that. You know, they'll 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 be going up to their dads in the middle of winter and it's 30 below out, and they don't bring, they're not even wearing boots or bringing their winter jackets. I'm like, dude. You don't have to wear your fucking jacket, but you need to have your fucking jacket at least and your boots if something happens to your vehicle in this extreme weather. I mean, it's no fucking around once you get below three, below 32 degrees. I mean, obviously, 20 degrees is a lot more survivable than minus 40. So, I mean, when you're talking temps in the minus 40s, yeah. That's life threatening. Okay. Absolutely. It is. Yeah, they should be wearing their boots while they're driving them because Right. They, they don't know it's something if they get you know, have to stop and they if get the out. Flat there's, tires, or they hit a deer, they're gonna have to jump out of the car. Know, and you know? there's there's ice on the ground and they're wearing sneakers, they're flat on their ass. Right, exactly. It's like but there's eighteen Grim. You know, they don't have the same life experience that you and I do. They think they know everything and they're oh, we'll be fine. Nothing's gonna happen. It's like you don't know that nothing's gonna happen. It, it, this is Wisconsin. I mean, like you said, a deer could jump out. I didn't say that, you know, but any, yeah. Any time of year. <laughs> oh, I, well, you said something. You said what did you say? Well, just for any reason they might have to stop right, along the side of the road. Out of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, either, or even getting out at a convenience store. It's always icy in those fucking parking lots. Right. I hate ice. I mean, ice is deadly, dude. And seriously, it's just like you got to be smart when you're dealing with extreme conditions. And even the, living in the desert, that's extreme conditions, too. You I'm not saying it it's worse up here. It's just a different extreme condition. Up here, it's, we're talking about brutal, deathly cold that if you walk outside for five minutes, you could, you're going to get frostbite. If you keep walking, you're going to get hypothermia and fucking die. I mean, it's it's life-threatening. Minus 40 below. Minus 40 below is life-threatening, okay? Yeah, I know. I mean, 110 can be 110 degrees above zero can be life-threatening, too. Sure. If you have no water, no shade source, no way to get cool, you're going to fucking burn up. You don't know. You know what the hell's gonna happen when you're out there. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Is like, it, you know, I, you know, I live in Eau Claire. You know, so odds are, like, if I break down in the middle of fucking Eau Claire, okay, I'm gonna get rescued, right? Right. But if you're traveling a long distance, or you're gonna be in between one place and another, in between, it's it's like basically nothing. You know, that's a different situation. You know. Yeah. Oh, God, I remember being a kid, Rome, and my mom, we actually had a fucking Pinto, 
and the heat did not work. And this was just after my parents got divorced, and my mom was fucking broke, and we, this is what we had was a pinto, and the heat didn't fucking work. Yeah. And we're, we're it's like 30 below, and we're driving down the freeway, and you know, there's, it was a pinto back in the 70s, it was like a 76 pinto, right? Or whatever the fuck. And it's, it's not airtight, so there's fucking, you know, you're going down the freeway at freeway speed, and it's literally like cold air just blasting you in the fucking face, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like cold as fuck, you know? And my mom always made us, you know, so when we knew the heat didn't work, we're like, that only lasted for like a couple of weeks, thank God, because then, like, she borrowed me from one of her relatives and got a different car, you know? It was like, thank God. Cause we got stranded one time on like the freeway. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember frozen toes. Sure. We got stranded on the freeway, and we were literally freezing our asses off. I mean, but we it was luckily it was right in the city, so like a tow truck came right away, and you know what I mean. It was like twenty minutes, or something, you know. Yeah. But it was like thirty below. That that's not fucking around. No. You know, and I've had frostbite in my toes because the skating rink was twelve blocks from my house. Well, ten. Ten blocks, or maybe eight. I don't know. But it was a block. In, in 30 below right. weather, eight blocks is far, okay? Yeah, sure. And my parents would not fucking give me rides. It's like, they would if they, if you want to go skating, you got to walk down there and walk back. I'm like, fuck you. I didn't say that when I was like nine, ten, you know. But I thought that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> And, I, you know, I would, I wanted to be out of the house so bad that I would do whatever. And I remember walking home, my, literally, my toes were fucking, I have had frostbite my toes for sure. You know, even today, if my toes get cold, I'm done. I gotta go in. You know? Right. I can be outside as long, until my toes get cold. Once my toes are cold, I'm done. You know? Yeah. Because frostbite is no joke either. No, it's not. You can certainly lose digits with frostbite. I mean, if you guys are, like, I'm really into history. So, like, I'm a history freak. It's really, it's freaky, you know. But anyway, um, look up Valley Forge. And you remember Valley Forge? Revolutionary not, not, War? Not, not personally. No, not personally, but <laughs> the history yeah. of Valley Forge. I remember some of it, yeah. They had to go through a winter... And people would literally lose toes and fingers due to frostbite. Like, sure. they would fall right off. Yeah. They would fall right off. Your, their toes and their fingers. Right. I mean, that literally, they they turn black, and they fall right off. Because what frostbite is, it's a burn. Okay? It's just like a burn. So when your frostbite gets to that point where your digits are falling off, that's like you've been in a fire. Does that and make sense? It does, and, and you want to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want your digits falling off to the frostbite, people. Uh, you no, just you don't. Do that's not. just not a good thing. So anyway, the soldiers of Valley Forge, they had it really hard. Dude. Because it was Valley Forge, I believe, is in Maryland or Delaware. I thought it was Virginia, but I don't know. Maybe it's Virginia. They winter there. Yeah, they do. And those guys had to hold out. and It was, I mean, it was brutal conditions for those guys. And even the Civil War winters were fucking hard. Sure. On the Civil War guys, too. I mean, amputations were done with the same night. They'd fucking cut off one guy's leg and they'd come over to you and cut off your leg. There was no anesthetic, no anesthesia, you know? But, but at least they had heroin. Yeah, they did <laughs> back then. They had morphine, too, I think. Yeah, they I, had morphine. I, think, I think it was more of the heroin they had. But uh, Civil War, they used morphine, too. But the Revolutionary War, in the 1700s, they didn't have that. They must have had something that they used as some kind of pain relief. I don't know. Whiskey. Yeah, whiskey. Yeah. I mean, so if you guys, I mean, that part of me being a history buff has helped me to realize, like, I shouldn't take anything for granted. 
You know, you I have it pretty good. I'm not living in the 1700s right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Rome's. If it wasn't like the flu or some disease or the cold, it, the, very few settlements survived winters when in in the. The, when the country, when the Europeans first came over, the, the the pilgrims and shit. Like when the Vikings came here, they were fine, you know. Right. Well, that's that's they're fair. used to winter, you know. But these prissy fucking English people, <laughs> 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 they weren't fucking used to it. Oh no. Exactly. They didn't even know what fucking corn was. You know. Right. Right. They didn't have any corn. They didn't know that. what fucking corn was yet. Yeah. You know, I mean, think about that. Maze. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I mean, it seems weird to be a history. It's not weird to me, but to a lot of people, are, oh, history's in the past. Who cares? Blah, blah, blah. History's in the like, past. That's very intelligent. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like no, whatever, I, you I can know. learn a lot from history, dude. Sure. You know, and that's why. Well. Uh, you can pretty much only learn from history. <laughs> that, that's what I just, I figured that out like a long time ago. You can't, like, you can't really learn true. from the future. <laughs> right. You know, and it's like, um, I just, that's why I love history is because you can learn so much. Because it is true that history repeats itself. Like, my theory is, like, Things have not changed. The only thing that's changed, really, is the technology. Yeah. As far as, like, government goes. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's the same old, same old since the 1700s, people. Since uh, Mesopotamia. Right. The only thing that's changed is the technology. They're able to control you better, you know, sure, using sure. their computers and their their surveillance and their cameras and their... You know this, that they're they're invasive. They're just so invasive in your 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 you. It's like fuck you. You want to fucking interrogate me and like pull me apart and fucking expose me? Well, let me do the same to you, motherfucker. You know? Sure, exactly. Yeah. I mean, let me see your fucking. You know, come on, Hillary. Tell me how people, how many people you've ordered to have killed. Tell, Bill, how many people did you order to have fucking murdered? George Bush Sr. Yeah. You played a role in the JFK assassination, you motherfucker. Assassination. You know? Fuck you. <laughs> you want me to fucking expose well, well, myself? Look, look. I, you know what? Guess what? I've never fucking murdered anybody. Yeah. Well, B Bush, Bush My scene. shit's going to be boring compared to your fucking shit. Bush Sr. was the head of the CIA for a long while. Yep. So how many people do you think he had ordered killed? Oh, fuck. It's not <laughs> work. Yeah. I uh, mean, when you're talking about the, the coups that were that they created, I mean, we're yeah, talking just whatever, millions of people here. You know, we're not just talking one or two. We're talking millions of people. Not about millions, but a lot. lot. Thing, <laughs> come on. That was, that was genocide. Rwanda? Anyone remember remember sure, that one? Sure. You know? Yeah, that, that movie. Bingo? You, you, did you see Bingo? that? Did, 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 that was in the United States. What? Yeah, did you see that movie, Hotel Rwanda? Yes, I did. Oh, it's a good movie. Freaking brutal. Yeah, they were. It was that was brutal though. That was genocide. That was not uh, only genocide. Yeah, they got me with. Was, they're, they're driving and, and, he's, and they stop it. What? What? What's, what, is what is this ground? It was all just right. crushed, dead, broken People. bodies. Yeah, bodies. for yep. miles. Just ah. Guys, <laughs> it, you guys I, don't remember Rwanda? Look it up. Yeah, that, 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 it, or just it, watch that. that just that watch that movie. It, it'll sicken you. Yeah, exactly. Watch that movie, Hotel Rwanda. It, it will sicken you. Yes, it will, and it that it you know that will seriously paint a picture for you. And if you if it doesn't sink in, then. I don't know what will make and it. I, I, you know, I can't say that that movie was accurate or not, but... Pretty close. Uh, close enough. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was pretty brutal. Very, very brutal over there. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, anyway, enough of this yep. stuff. Let's let's hear some music. All right, let's do that. <laughs> we'll be back. 
More the creatures ball, <laughs> you all. all that nasty stuff. <laughs> yeah, we we can only talk about that for so long, you know. Oh God, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. All right, a little bit of ZZ for you. All righty then. R uh, shades up. Is everybody having a good time? Oh, yeah, very nice, very nice there. Gary Clark Jr. doing numb. A most girl request. Uh, before that was The Doors, 5 to 1. A cowboy tech request. Uh, actually, he requested it twice. So it's really nice. And we kicked it off with ZZ Top and Cheap Sun Glasses. Yeah. Oh, hey, Hansel. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Most girl. I know you're busy chatting there in the chat, but come on now. <laughs> okay, I'm here. Sorry, I had to finish typing when I was typing. I know. I know. I saw, I saw you. I saw, I saw you was busy. Uh, no. Okay. So we've been talking, or I've been talking in chat, discussing um, some things as far as when the the Pilgrims and the Quakers and shit came over here, like in the 1700s. They were fucking clueless. They had no fucking idea what they were getting into, and they tr they were really ultra religious. So they trusted God, you know, and when they got stricken, or when they had to deal with this extreme cold temperatures and had to deal with disease, they, they, and they had no food to eat because they didn't stock up, they were, they were fucking dumb, yeah. you know, and, and the first Thanksgiving, the story of it was that the Native Americans saved these motherfucking people, right? Sure. They gave them food. They gave them meat, corn. They fucking taught them how to fucking hunt, how to grow the fucking corn. Right. You know? Right. So then, fast forward, all of a sudden, government's trying to buy land from the Native Americans. They, the Native Americans didn't understand what it meant to buy land because Mother Earth is for every human. It's not for it's not theirs to sell. It's not. So they didn't understand what they meant. Oh, we want to buy this land from you. They didn't get it. So then the, the government, well, obviously there's a, a language barrier, right? But there were a lot of French, there was a lot of Europeans here before the pilgrims. There were fur traders and you know, people like that, right? Sure. Which the history doesn't mention that very often. It is written down, but they don't, they, they skip over that part, right? So there were some people that knew how to speak the native languages. Okay, but the Indians still couldn't understand. You can't sell parts of Mother Earth. It's for all humans. You know, they're just like, what? We don't own this, you know? Right. And so, the government couldn't get the Indians to budge. Which I don't blame the Indians, right? Yeah, they, sure. you know, they're yeah. like, fuck you. You know, whatever. Anyway, so then the government said, well, we gotta fucking get rid of them somehow. So, they decided to supply some of the tribes blankets, like it was a good thing. Oh, here, accept these blankets from us, because we care about you. Okay? Right. Guess what? Blankets had smallpox on them. Smallpox germs. Smallpox bacteria. So guess what? They all died. They, they tried to wipe out the Native Americans by making, making well, you them know, it, have smallpox. It, 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 right? The white, the white man had manifest destiny. Yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> the white man? <laughs> anyway... Just ask Hans. He knows all about Manifest Destiny. Yeah, I know he does. Whatever. He, he knows all about it. Ask Goober. Hey, He's not it. Maybe I not Goober. This isn't pushing my buttons, buddy. This is what I fucking know and stand <laughs> by, dude. This is fucking the truth. And the truth ain't fucking pretty, is it? Uh, but the not best usually, thing about no. this is it's the fucking truth. Right. 
So, and so that they did that. Then they decided to bring in government troops to fucking wipe them out. Just go into an Indian village and massacre everybody. Babies, 80-year-olds, women, don't give a fuck. Wipe them all out. Okay? <laughs> and this, the U.S. government did that many times over. Not just in one place, not just in one state. So, uh, people, you think history is a joke? It isn't. Because no, guess what? I think people, you know, This most... is 2018, almost 2019, guess what? You know what the government's ha made happen? Tell me. The United States is now a reservation. Sure. And... It don't matter if you're Native American or not. Don't matter what fucking race you are, what religion you are, what color the fuck you are. You're on. You're in the reservation. That's right. Welcome to the reservation. That's right. Because they're not just targeting Native Americans anymore. They're targeting everybody. Yeah, Russell Means told us all about it. He did. I'm not inventing anything. No, no, he's not. He's not saying you're okay, inventing it. The, never mind. I was looking they, at the chat. They are inventing it. Welcome to the reservation. Yes. So, you know what they're doing now? Instead of giving you a fucking blanket, the smallpox on it, they're saying they're making you feel bad if you don't get a flu shot. Yeah, yeah, you're Come evil. Come in for your flu shot. <laughs> We're here to help you. Just like the government said to the Native Americans. Take these blankets. We're here to help you. Which was a fucking lie. Well, they just left off a word. What? Die. We're here to help exactly. you. Exactly. Die. Help you die. <laughs> so, you think it was, you think, yeah. Times were different in the 1700s, obviously, right? We didn't have fucking flushable toilets. But the government mentality was the same in the 1700s as it is today. Get it through your thick fucking skull, people. You can make your skull less thick if you want to. It's called opening your fucking mind and don't think you fucking know everything there is to know right now. Because you don't. And guess what? You never will fucking know everything. So if you think you do, you have a serious complex, a serious complex going on. If you think you fucking know everything, you have a complex. All right, and you probably need to see a psychologist or something. Well, it's, it's even. I mean, it's it's far more. I mean, you can obviously never know everything, but you can not right. even ever know everything about anything. Exactly. To take any any little thing that you do, whatever it is in your life, whether it's uh, accounting or plumbing or uh, right. uh, wood or wh whatever. You can never know everything there is to know about whatever that little exactly. general area is. So right. To think you know everything about everything, well, then you're just lunatic. You're fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> you think you, oh, I know everything about everything, so I am the, the authority on everything. No, you're not, buddy. No, you're not. <laughs> you, you can think that, and you can say that, but you know what? You're not. <laughs> you know? That's why I I like, I live by the theory of, I, I, was, I like to learn something new every day. Like, I have that mentality, so I'm able to, like, recognize it when it's happening. Some Most people are fucking clueless. They have no fucking idea. Most people just walk around like Gooberson. Zombies! You know, oh, blah, football, beer, women, Voting. sex, drugs, you know, <laughs> television. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know, yeah. it's like, come on, people. But, but I want to ask Hans here. Come on. Why Zimbabwe? 
I, I mean, you can't live in the mountains here somewhere, you know? Why, why, why would, why would, why would uh, somebody want to move to Zimbabwe when, when you None can find a... hates white people. When you, when you, you can say that, but... <laughs> when you could find a re remote a area. your opinion, here. buddy. And your opinion <laughs> fucked up and racist. So you can't say that everybody, everyone hates white people. White people don't hate white people. <laughs> You know, I mean, I've seen many, you know, multiracial couples. I've seen white people with, a, a, white women with Asian guys. I see Asian guys with, or vice versa. You know what I mean? I see black women and white women are married as a couple and then married for 60 years. You know? So, you know what? Your racism shit is bullshit. And it's government perpetuated. And you're fucking stupid if you can't fucking see that. You've been indoctrinated. You bought right in their fucking shit. So, you know, don't don't be fucking criticizing me for being, you know, the way I am when you're the way you are because you're the closed-minded motherfucker, not me. You know, it would be so much better. You're the one that's bought in the fucking whole government shit of racism. <laughs> the government perpetuated, perpetuated racism bullshit. So, when they talk about whitey, they're talking about you. They're not talking about me. Yeah. Anyway, it'd be it would be so much better if Donald Trump's name was Julius Trump. Then you could just say yeah, no or, shit. Orange Julius bad. Julius C. Trump. <laughs> orange Orange Julius bad. <laughs> yeah, Orange Julius fucking fuck. I did not say that I hate all white people. Do not fucking say that because I did not say that. I did not fucking say. No, did I say that, Grim? No, you did not. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck you! It may, it may have been interpreted that way, but it but. probably was interpreted. Oh, I'll play back the recording. You betcha! I guarantee you, I did not <laughs> say that I hate white people. I was saying what you said. Uh, I say, Jade Red said in the chat, Zilla. I say that everyone hates white people from things that were done before any of us were born should stop using all the things that white people invent. Also, should move to Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe and see how well they do there. Yeah. That's what you said, not what I said, buddy. And anyway. I was responding to your <laughs> comment in the chat room. Okay, okay, so okay, okay. Don't be trying we, to turn back it. on we the team, you motherfucker. We got it. Anyway, I'm not going to move to Zimbabwe. But I, I can no, live... I that's can just ridiculous to even say that. You're just... Obviously, your racism is showing... Your racism flag is flying high today. We all know how you feel, what you think, j -Drad. You know what? We don't fucking agree with it. So you're coming in here trying to fucking throw your, spew your <laughs> shit down our throats when we don't, don't buy it. That's just nasty. We just don't fucking buy it, buddy. And you don't get it. You keep... Oh, you're trying to be funny. Ooh, ooh. I'm so funny. All right, all right, all right. You're Sorry. not. Ignore, Sorry. Just, just, You're just, not. Just, just ignore the chat. Uh. <laughs> no, I, you know, yeah. Oh, he, he came in wanting to push buttons anyway. That's what he fucking does. He uh, fucking you know? likes to get people riled up. Likes to get under their skin like a typical fucking, fucking government fucking bitch. <laughs> Settle down there, Moose. Settle down. No, I'm not. No. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. The, sarc oh, the sarcasm God. and shit. The oh, blah, 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 blah. yeah. Oh, well, I'm gonna say the stupid <laughs> ass shit. Hitler is an awesome guy. Really, dude? Was he? Uh, really? I don't, was I don't, he? I don't, I don't no, think he he's... fucking was not. I don't, you I don't, know what? That I, 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 I don't fucking rec... kill himself. I don't, he I don't went to recall. Argentina and had a fucking eight... Argentine girlfriend and fathered children. I don't. I we don't believe. We all fucking know that. All right. I, that I, that information is out there. Dude. Look, so you, you you can fucking hide behind your fucking swastika all you fucking want. <laughs> most most. What? Hans never said Hitler was an awesome guy. Bullshit. He says it every all the time in a row. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He's not fucking fooling me. This. I you know what. <laughs> I'm. I, I'm done. This is bullshit. Come in here! Oh, this uh, Trump's the greatest guy. <laughs> well, he does you know say what? that. You're fucking he, stupid. He, you don't he, get it, dude. Because you were you're in the military, or you were, and you bought right into their fucking thinking, hook, line, and sinker, just like all the other motherfuckers that join up with them do. 
You know, the Vietnam guys, they didn't want to go there. They had to because they were fucking drafted. They could have ended that thing in 68, but they fucking did it. Well, they should have never been in there in the first place. That's no, safe. right, exactly. It was a <laughs> manufactured fucking war. Right. So. And you're fucking dumb if you don't fucking think this. You bought into their shit hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> yeah, you guys are way behind. I don't like it. Anyway. Chris Scott fucking Bush. Look that up. Look that motherfucker up. Here we are, the whole country is celebrating the death of the... George Herbert Walker Bush. Really? Well, the, most of them were... I'm making most... shit up. I am not making shit up. No, 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 no. The, the, the stuff about Hitler there. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. You, you... Stuff? He didn't fucking commit suicide with Ava Braun. No. He probably <laughs> on her. But he got, he got whisked off to Argentina. And you know oh. it because there's still a fucking Nazi fucking affiliation in Argentina. Look at the fuck up. Well, sure, sure. That's all good. That's all true. But he, he said he never said that 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 Hitler was a great guy. Oh, oh, yeah. But he sits there and praises the Nazis and shit all day. No, he doesn't on. praise the Nazis. Yes, but Hitler was a Hitler was a <laughs> fucking Nazi. Look, I don't I don't want to be on the I, I don't want to be on the side of defending Hans because you're telling me now he wasn't he wasn't a fucking Nazi. Who? Really? Who? Hans. Hans is trying to tell me Hitler wasn't a fucking Nazi. No, 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 you're missing, this is being misconstrued here. He glorifies Nazis. <laughs> you can tell. He's a fucking German. Oh, God. He's fucking German. Not that that means you're, you're a Nazi lover, but he obviously is. Who is? Jay Dredd. He's not a Nazi lover. Bullshit. He's not. I, I've... I've I've talked to him at length during the days here, and I know that he is not a fan of the Nazis. See, now he's saying we can thank the French for Vietnam. Yeah, absolutely. No, we can thank the CIA, bitch. <laughs> the, the, the French, the French is the ones that went in there and going against up the Chi against the Chinese. Initially, initially maybe, but it was a CIA created thing. Though they're the ones they wanted in, they wanted in, and in on it. It was manufactured sure. more. LBJ was all for it, man. Just like all of them. Yeah. Just like every single one. The Civil Fucking War was funded by the same fucking bankers. Both sides. Look yes. it up. Of course it's they were. Lion, look it up. All wars are bankers' wars. Yes. <laughs> it's war a fact. Is, what war is to them is population control. Because well, that's back all kinds the day, of things. Before women were allowed in the military officially, although women served in the military on an unofficial basis uh, in World War II and other wars, like nurses during the Civil War, were women, right? Right. But what it is, it's population control. So most of the fucking people that <laughs> went to war were men, right? Of you course, the soldiers were all men. The soldiers. You're not going to have a lot of people creating children either, are you? Because you need men to create kids. Yeah, but a man's only got to be there for a few minutes to have it to create a kid. That's true, but the, the you got to have it alive, dude. You can't fuck a corpse and get well, pregnant. But they weren't all going to die. Oh yeah, that's why these 14 and 15 year old I mean, kids went out to the Civil uh, War. Well, I, I know, but I, but I mean, chance to have sex in the first place. Well, that that for that that way, then, then then the old you know let let your guys they they could pick up on the young girls because there was no guys their age. Right, they might have been <laughs> Uber, but never let a good crisis go to waste, right? So the CIA jumped ahead and jumped right fucking in on that and fucking be oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, we're gonna take advantage of this situation. You know, we're gonna extend it. We're not going to end it in 68 when we could have. We could have ended it any time we wanted to. No, we're going to extend it for about four or five more years. Yeah. Right? Well, till 73, you know. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Lordy, fuck. <laughs> Settle that, Moose. <laughs> no, you know, 
I get passionate. Uh, I, fucking, I know you do. I, I and, mean, and it's like people need to fucking know. They don't fucking know history, so they're all like, oh, this, that, the other thing. It's like, really? Alright, alright. Was I wrong in anything I said, Grim? Well, some of it, yeah. Like but, what? Well, at least the stuff you were, you were saying about Hans. Uh, you, you you were you were not correct. I mean, he's not a Hitler fan or or a Nazi lover. Or he's a Trump fan. Well, he's a Trump fan, and that's terrible. He believes in government. He believes in government, and that's terrible. It is. <laughs> it is. It is terrible. It is. I know it is. But well, I wasn't wrong. Well, no, but <laughs> you were wrong not about. I was fucking wrong. Uh, you said because he's, you... he buy, if he believes in government, that means he belongs. Buys into the to the lie. Okay. And I I think that not just about him, but about anybody. Well, sure. Believes in the government and thinks the government's here to help you. No, it's it's the it's the whole you know belief in authority thing, and you gotta yeah. have you gotta have people with guns to shoot you in the head if you, yeah, if you don't lick their right. boots. I I understand all that. I like and, and I agree I mean, with I'm all that. I'm not trying to single them out, but I'm sorry to use him as an example, but it is it's not just him. It's a lot of people. That's why we have the problems we have. You know, hell's always talking. Oh, you got to do something. No one wants to do anything. Because no one knows what to do. And they don't know the, the history. They, they, don't, they don't have no clue. You know? Right. Well, so the thing is, doing stuff is hard. <laughs> it is. And it costs money. <laughs> but, but do, but, but but you you can you know, you can sit there and chirp and that that's that's pretty easy. Oh well, yeah, and that's what I do. That's what we do. We met. That's what we do on this show, you know. Well, and I know that it's not like productive, and I'm not trying. I'm not really accomplishing anything. But hey, hey, speaking of that, you know, uh, that w that's what we do on this show. I'm thinking about doing another show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which would be a, which would be a, what would you call it? A spin-off of Freakers. A spin-off of Freakers? Yeah. Okay. And and, it, and it's going to be called Grim Leftovers. Ooh, I like it. Uh, basically what it's going to be is just all the stories I'd ever get to here on the show. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I, cool. I, I, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, did some preliminary work on it already, uh, just like a graphic and setting up a Spreaker thing. And what stuff I like would that. like to do, but that would be a wire would be to have a round table, like have a topic, and then have like a round table discussion. But the one of the rules would be that each person is allowed two to five minutes to speak uninterrupted. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times those round tables, everyone tries to speak at one time. And we even run into that problem sometimes. We run out, you know what I mean? So, so but you need, I think it would well, be interesting so, to have, like, so what, maybe what, once a month or something. So you want a, a round table with Robert's Rules of Order? Yes. Where everyone is allowed their, their time, you get a certain time slot. Everyone gets the same time slot. You can use the maximum, or the you don't have to, you know, do the maximum. You can do it within a certain amount of time, you know, and then people can comment after. But you have to have your time to be able to get your whole spiel out. You know what I mean? Without interruption. Like everyone ha would have to mute their mic while you speak. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Because you know how it goes when the, when you get on a round table. And everyone wants to talk at the same time, and someone will say something or make someone else want to say something. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think if you had, like, allotments of time, and everyone would have to mute their mic while they were. And then there would be a portion of the time afterward, after that person spoke, to, like, counteract or discuss what they said. You know what I'm saying? So you're talking about, like, a debate. Yeah, like a debate. Maybe maybe you can uh, talk with Flash. Maybe he'll want to do that with the dark table, or something like like once a month. You know, not just like it's not once a week. You know, not you know just once a month. If everyone wants to like 
we'll pick a topic and we'll say this is going to be the round table topic and if you want to join in, join in, you know. But the rules are you will have your amount of time to speak uninterrupted. William's After rules. That, you know, you know what I mean? Who the hell is William? I only know of Robert's rules. I don't know any William's rules. Hmm. <laughs> You're making up William Roberts. That's a whole different... <laughs> 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 William Roberts is a... That's a different guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> different guy. But, I mean, I need to apologize. I'm going to on-air apologize to Jay Dredd. I wasn't trying to, I, I did single you out, and I apologize because it's not just you, it's a lot of others that are, that I was talking about, but, anyway, I just yeah. wanted to put that in there. All right, well, I'm going to play a video here. All righty. A couple, three videos. Uh, anyway, right. this this yeah. first this first video I'm going to play, you need to watch the video and read the, the crawl. Okay. You know, like the news crawl. While well, while you're watching the video. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I I think you'll I think you'll enjoy this. All right, where's my camera? Here it is. All right, this is a band called Dorothy. Song is called Dark Nights. Enjoy. Don't say History shows again and again how nature points out the folly of man. Blue Oyster Cult, Godzilla. Uh, for Hansel there, that was a Hansel request. Before that, a great song that if you didn't listen to the lyrics, or read the lyrics on the screen since it was a lyric video, you really missed out. That's a great anti-war tune there. Disturbed and No More. And we kicked it off there with Dorothy doing Dark Knight. Uh, Dark Knight, uh, <laughs> it's a hilarious video. I'm going to put the, the link into the chat there. For all you people that didn't, uh, weren't watching the video, you're just listening on the audio, uh, go ahead and play this video, but, but put it on mute as you play it. And, and then um, after that, you you, or you can read the lyrics, or read the uh, crawl, not the lyrics, the, the crawl yeah. at the bottom of the video there, uh, for those of you that thought that we had an open mic. <laughs> Yeah, no, that wasn't me. Uh, it was not an open mic. That was the video. <laughs> and it's hilarious. It's, that, it's, yeah, it's, such funny, it's such funny it's stuff. It's like an open mic, but it wasn't. It was a video. Uh, <laughs> it's such funny stuff. Um, <laughs> anyway, so watch that video on mute so you can read the read the crawl without, without distraction. <laughs> Oh yep. man. Yeah. You 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 crack it. Anyway, up. um you'll dig it. Let's see. I think I have a bookmark. Something bookmark. I was like talking about. Uh, oh, let me tell you about the uh, oh, oh, no, there's this oh, Go okay, ahead. Well, yeah, let me tell you about this uh deal here. I I I ordered a microphone, a little desk microphone. Yep. Uh, off of Amazon back in like September. Okay. And um and and I I got it. It was only like ten bucks. It was cheap cheap piece of crap, right? So I was yeah. I, I wasn't expecting much and, and right. You were expecting it to be good or whatever. And, and it wasn't. Uh, no, okay. It, it, it was it was it was not good. Um. Any, anyway, uh, so I wrote the you know the Amazon says hey go ahead and write a review. I wrote a review and I told him about it. I, I I didn't slam him. I just told him these are the problems with it. it you know, it it, it uh, whenever you click the uh, the mute button, there's a little mute button on the base there. Um, it, it makes you know a big big spike noise, uh, electric uh, you know electrical interference noise. Um, and and so that yeah, that's that, not good. So that doesn't work for me. Um, no. And and then the other thing is you know it. You really got you got to like have the mic right up to your head, which it's a desk mic, so you shouldn't have that. It shouldn't be the deal. Right, right. It should be, yeah. Okay. So anyway, so I wrote that uh, review in October sometime, 
And then earlier this week, I get an email from the from the guy from the company. He's like, "Hey, oh, yeah? you know, we're sorry that uh, the mic uh, didn't work out for you, and and we'd like to make it right and make you happy <laughs> uh, happy happy on this deal." Like I said, I'm talking about a ten dollar mic here. Um, <laughs> and and uh, you know, we we want to you know, uh, we have we've designed this new microphone here. Yeah, uh, that, that does cool. this, and we'll send it to you for free. Oh, and, and I and I, I and I wrote them back, and I and I took like a, yeah. screen, a screenshot of the, the noise spikes and stuff. I yeah. said, does it does it does it fix this? I mean, yeah. uh, is this still going to be a problem? Right. And he's, well, you know, all all these switches are going to make noise, <laughs> and, and and it's not true. Um, no, they don't all make noise. The, no, the, they don't. The, the mute switch on my on my headset here makes zero noise. Yeah, uh, mine too. Whatsoever. Um, right. Although, 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 although I've had many, many headsets that do make a clicking sound noise. Right, you can uh, hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and it comes out, it comes in on the audio, and I, and I hate it. I can't, I can't deal with it. So uh, I guess they're gonna send me a new mic. I don't know nice. for free, <laughs> and it's like, well, I don't really need uh, any this other one, but. Whatever, I'll take it, I suppose. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, you know, it might be okay. It's, if, it's, if it's free, whatever. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it's just kind of, it's just kind of weird to me that uh, that that would be the, uh, the they would go through that hassle over this. Um, um, maybe they think the, the the review is hurting their sales. I, I don't know. No, maybe they like your ideas and like, hey, this guy is like making a point. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I don't think anybody was right. really expecting a top-notch mic for ten dollars. Like, yeah. You know. <laughs> right, and like I was like working at the fucking grocery store, you know, and like. I can already tell there's things they could do to improve the whole experience, especially for the employee. You know what I mean? Right, right, sure. It's just like, this way, I don't know, I'll talk about it later, but cause I want to talk about the story that I had with Mark here. Which I think uh, is all right, right, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to get off topic or whatever. All right, go ahead. Um, does it matter? Anyway, um, two altar boys were arrested for putting weed in the sensor burner. This is from wildchild.co.za, and it's from December 5th, 2018. What started as a joke ended with the future of two altar boys from Spain, and ended with, uh, it's poorly written, you know, it happened in Spain. All right. They were detained overnight after having surprised them putting we in the center burner of the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. The sensor burner is used is used the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela to celebrate the epiphany of the Lord. Several assistants stated that in this location the holy precinct was suddenly covered in an odd smell. It did not smell as always. It was a familiar smell, but I could not relate it to anything. But my son's bedroom sometimes smelled like that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> They're yeah. altar boys. Oh my god, it's such a disgrace that they can't be altar boys anymore. Which, oh well, you know. So, but, so, you know, so, down in Santiago or whatever, it might be a big deal. You know, or in so, Spain, it might be a big deal, you know. So, so the priests won't molest them since they're not going to be altar boys anymore. Right, hopefully not. You know, hopefully yeah. they, they got off before that happened. You know, so kudos to the you again, you know. All right. I think it's funny as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that this week. Oh, I'm like, that's god. fucking funny. Oh my god. That, that is funny. <laughs> and then there's these other idiots, okay, from Kanakistan. Kana Alright. That decided to ride a female moose. And this is, this is, this is animal abuse. This should not happen. No. You should never do this to any animal in the wild at all. You <laughs> might want to play this video, Grim. But the, the 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 thing is, is don't get drunk and try to fucking do shit to wild animals. All right? Yeah, so, uh, you know. I mean, they're 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 slipping their lives, people. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they don't want no drunk people fucking with their day. You know, <laughs> come on. I mean, leave them alone. Let them just live their yeah. life. You know, come don't on. mess. Don't mess with 
the moose. Yeah, I mean, come on. This is, I mean, it might be funny to your buddies and, you know, you're a drunk idiot, but really, you're an asshole. <laughs> you know? Alright, let's see what we got here. Okay, let's look at this. Alright, we got some. What, what is this guy doing? Okay, there's the moose. Okay, he's on a boat and they see this moose swimming across the other side, right? Alright. And so they're drunk and the guy's like, oh, I'm going to try to ride that moose. Right? Alright. Which, why? Why? Leave the poor creature alone. You know, you're a drunk asshole. Why would you want to fuck with this moose like this? You know? She's just going along her day. She don't need no drunk asshole coming up. Fucking try to ride her. And especially a human. I mean, look at this. This is not cool. That's just wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Okay? That moose is probably like, get the fuck off me, you fucking dick. Yeah, what an asshole. Jeez. I mean, but come on. Don't be fucking trying to ride mooses. No, do not do that. That's that's just messed up. That is, that poor moose, she was probably terrified that this boat's coming at her, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because they got right up on her, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I can't wait to hold my beer. Yeah, what a fucking drunk idiot. You know, and that, that oh. won't even happen in Canuck of well, well, That happens everywhere. Yeah. I'm going to throw a story at you, just okay. to piss you off. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But don't, just let me get through the story. Don't 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 start okay, ranting in the middle here, because it's gonna piss you off. Okay, well I'm gonna mute. <laughs> <laughs> this is posted on the freethoughtproject.com. It's killing people every day. Fox pushes insane anti-weed propaganda and ridiculous 90-second clip. <laughs> Marijuana is killing people every day across the United States. Fox News is no stranger to hating on weed. In fact, the Free Thought Project has reported on their insane reefer madness several times. However, the, on this Monday's episode of Fox and Friends, the propaganda and utter lies hit a new high. No pun intended. On, mo- on Monday, Fox and Friends was covering the story of out of Mulberry, Florida, in which a 12-year-old kid had handed out THC gummies in a gym class at his middle school last week. At least five of his classmates went to the hospital with symptoms one would expect from a child ingesting marijuana, such as stomach pain, dizziness, and nausea. Local media ran a story claiming the kids were hospitalized, and it made them seem like it was the end of the world. And while it was certainly a terrible idea for a child to eat a THC gummy, it's most assuredly not the end of the world, as marijuana has never killed anyone ever. All yes, the... that is true. It's never killed anyone ever. <laughs> That's right. All the kids are now fine, and the child who gave of the gu- they are. Uh, gave the gummies faces seven felony charges for, pr- for, oh, for, for okay. possessing and distributing marijuana. After hyping up the fear about the kids eating the gummies, the folks at Fox and Friends went on to demonize marijuana in general, as if he had channeled the ghost of Henry Anslinger. Fox and Friends co-host, co-host Brian Kilmeade went on to spewing ignorant lies and assertions straight out of the 1930s. No one talks about this. THC is addicting, Kilmeade said. I know so many people... They say when when they're told one thing, they end up getting addicted to it. And this is an addicting substance. Substance. There's a price to pay for pot. Uh, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judge Judd uh, then expressed his agreement and went further, claiming that marijuana is literally killing people every day. (laughs) All right. 
<laughs> I can't go on. There's more to this story, but we're out of time. Um, yeah, you can't go on. It's laughable. <laughs> Oh, it, it's just it, it, it's it's this this is what they actually want you to believe. Oh, marijuana is killing you. It's killing your children. No, oh, it isn't. Oh my God. You're murdering. Oh, God. You're you're murdering your your no, it's children. No, helping kids that have epilepsy and helping kids that have ADHD. It's, it's keeping kids away from being on <laughs> narcotics and big pharma meds and shit. And it's helping not just kids, but all humans. No, it's murdering you. It's killing you. All right, anyway, we got to go. We got to go. I know we got to go, but it's like, oh, my God, don't (laughs) bite into this crap, people. Do not buy it. Do not buy it. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. It's like, we we for madness come to life. Say that Uh, three times every night before you go to bed. I'm going to think for myself. I'm going to think for myself. I'm going to think for myself. And then do it. Yes. There you go. All right. Well, here we go. Challenge. Last set. All right. right. Enjoy. You ready, guys? Okay. Oh, Black Betty. Yes, indeed. I love it. Ram Jam there doing Black Betty. That's a Monroe's video. Run Rose. Retro video. I can almost talk. Before that, we had this guy named uh, Jerome Grail uh, covering ACDC's Thunderstruck on a three string cigar box guitar. Uh, just excellent stuff there. You guys having a good time and it sounds really good. Before that, we had the Rolling Stones painted black, also a Monroe's retro video, and that video just came out today. And we kicked it off there with Haley Reinhardt covering the box tops the letter so uh that is it that is it folks uh i hope you all enjoyed the show hope you all yes that is it tune in next week hope you all have a great weekend yes have a good weekend everyone don't forget the shows on our radio this weekend you got uh dark table tomorrow at noon you got me on uh, sunday at noon uh followed yep. by hal anthony at 3 p.m uh, and then, uh, but the, the, the uh, In a Perfect World <laughs> show with uh, Flash again on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern and Grammy on Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And um, I guess that's it. You got anything else? Uh, no, I'm good. Let's have a good weekend, everyone. And uh, if if it's cold and shitty weather, watch some documentaries. Yeah. Uh, Rod Your Horizons. Learn right. some history. <laughs> you know? And don't believe what they tell you either. Exactly. <laughs> Talk to don't watch some mainstream documentaries. Like, dig deeper than that. I, that's my challenge. Like, if you're bored, you don't know something, you want to know something more about the Vietnam War that you didn't know, you want something to know more, know more, uh, more about the World War Two or whatever subject. You know, it doesn't have to be war. It can be anything. Anything. You know? Yep. All right. Check it out. Broaden your mind. Broaden your horizons. Broaden your mind. Because you don't know everything. And there's more to learn. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Peace.